Washington, D.C., July 2nd, 1881, 9.30 a.m. President James A. Garfield arrives at the Baltimore and Potomac Railroad Station. He has been in office for less than four months and is about to leave for his summer vacation. A man approaches the president from behind. This is Charles Guiteau, a mentally disturbed individual with a grudge against Garfield. Guiteau fires a pistol from point-blank range. Garfield cries out, My God, what is that? Flinging up his arms. Guiteau fires again. Garfield collapses. One bullet has grazed the president's shoulder. The other strikes him in the back, missing the spinal cord before coming to rest behind his pancreas. Garfield is conscious but in shock. Aides carry him back to the White House. Eminent doctors are summoned to his bedside. Their initial prognosis is not good. We don't think he will survive the night, they tell Aides. But by the morning they are becoming more optimistic. His vital signs are good. There appears to be a good chance of recovery. For 79 days, America waits, while its best doctors work the most advanced medical technology to try to save the president. The Navy even provides its prototype air conditioning technology. Fans blow air over a large box of ice and into the president's sick room. At times, Garfield seems close to recovery before succumbing to new infections. He also struggles to deal with the intense heat in Washington that summer. In September, Garfield is moved to the Jersey Shore, but his condition worsens. On September the 19th, the president dies, two months before his 50th birthday. What went wrong? The fundamental issue was that most American doctors rejected Lister's ideas introduced in London a decade earlier about the need for an antiseptic environment for any surgical procedure. Doctors probed Garfield's wound with dirty, unsterilised fingers and instruments, attempting to find the location of the bullet. Many solutions were offered, including the suggestion that they should hold the president upside down while two strong men squeezed out the bullet. Alexander Graham Bell, inventor of the telephone, even designed a special metals detector to pinpoint the bullet. Unfortunately, the president's chief doctor insisted that the machine be only used on one side of the body. The wrong side, as it turned out. The only metal the detector detected came from Garfield's sickbed. As John Dickerson explains, poking and the prodding of the quote-unquote doctors and experts that probably ended up killing Garfield by introducing all kinds of infections just as he was getting better, they'd come in with a new cure and make him sicker. What the Garfield case shows is that a surgeon's clean hands may in the end prove more crucial to your survival than the fanciest medical technology.